Hey guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to make a heavy duty, adjustable dog collar. This collar features one inch nylon webbing, welded steel O-rings, and an extra wide sanctified weave. So we've done a couple pet related projects on this channel over the years. The most recent one is this heavy duty dog leash, and we got a lot of good feedback on it. People are actually wondering if we could make a heavy duty dog collar tutorial to go along with this one. So we wanted to make this one adjustable as well, because let's be honest, it's pretty hard to make a collar exactly the right size for your dog. Or if you're making them to sell, it's really hard to predict exactly what size of dog you're gonna be making these for. So we added this nylon webbing, and this is actually my Mach 1 version with some lighter duty hardware. We really wanted to beef this one up so that it was suitable for the largest of dogs. So we switched out the webbing for some heavier duty stuff and added this steel O-ring. Before we go any further, I wanna let you know that all of these supplies are available in our store, so we'll link to those in the description. And if we get enough likes on this video, we might even consider making this into a kit paired with some paracord. So comment below with what colors you'd wanna see this in. All right, now onto the supplies. So for this project, you're gonna need two colors of paracord. This first one, I've only got 10 feet of, but the main color is gonna depend on the size of dog that you have. I'm gonna make a 20 inch collar and I'm starting with 50 feet of paracord but I think I'm gonna have quite a bit left over. So you'll see at the end of the video. We need our one inch nylon webbing and we just need about a foot and a half of that. We've got a one inch buckle. This is specially designed for use with webbing as it has the two bars on one side. Our one inch welded steel O-ring and then this extra wide tri-glide is what they're called. Let's dive in. We'll start by assembling our adjustable portion. We'll take that nylon webbing and first thread it through the tri-glide, up through one side and down through the other. Just leave a couple inches off to the side. Then we'll put the welded O-ring on and feed it back the opposite direction through the tri-glide. And we might just want to leave a little bit longer than this on the other side so that nothing slides through. There we go. Then on the other side of our webbing, we'll add on that buckle. If you wanna come up through the slat that's closest to the, the buckle itself, thread that most of the way through, and then bring it down through the other hole. Nope. Just like that. And that doesn't hold it very well itself, so we're gonna slide it through that tri-glide right on top of everything else. So I've set the adjustable portion to seven inches from the ring to the other end of this buckle. And that way we can go smaller or larger depending on if our weave ends up a little bit too long or too short. So we just wanna get a measurement of our dog's neck and make the collar exactly that length. So we'll get our paracord. We've got our 10 feet, we can just set that aside for now. And this 50 footer or whatever length you're starting with, we're gonna cut that in half so we'll get that started and then I'm gonna set it up on a jig. You don't need a jig at home. Um, the sanctified weave is a lot easier on a jig, um, but you can do without it. I made the first example without it, but it holds it nice and still on camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So now we've got our main color cut into two pieces and I've found the middle of each of those cords because we're gonna cow hitch them onto the buckle. So just like a bracelet, bring the fold down through the buckle, bring the cord down through that loop and pull it all through. We'll hitch this one right beside it. And at this point, we'll take it apart and attach our other end to this ring. So trace all four ends back. Actually, I'm not gonna worry about keeping those untangled for now. We'll sort that out later. We wanna bring them all down through the top of the ring. Make sure that it's right side up. Thread it back to the buckle end. So now we wanna make sure that all these cords are lying flat and none of them are twisted over each other because those are gonna be our parallel strands for the core of the collar. So now before we begin weaving, I'm gonna put it on that jig. I've got mine set up to just be the paracord portion of the collar. Um, you could put really large buckles on there and fit it in to one of these here, but 
I find it easiest to just put it over that ring and that's gonna hold it in place a lot better. So we'll bring this other end down to the peg on the other side and do the same thing, just like that. So now back up to our weaving end. We just wanna bring two cords out to each side. We just wanna make sure that none of these cords are crossing over each other or twisted. Then we're gonna take the top of those two cords, start with the left, and we'll bring it underneath the first two cords and over the second two. Then with the other top cord, underneath the left two, over the top of the right two. Looks like that one's really that far. We wanna leave these two loops, so I'm just gonna kind of hook them up here so they stay out of the way and don't close shut. These other two cords, start with the left again, and this one's gonna come up through the middle and make sure that it's below our crossed cords that we just did. So up through the middle, and then down through that loop that we left open. Like that. And then our other cord up here, it's gonna do the same thing, up and then down through that left loop. Pulling that tight. So then before we tighten that down, it should look about like this. It's a little bit dark in the middle there. There we go. So we got our two loops crossing over and those two cords coming up through the middle and down through the loops. So we'll go ahead and tighten that one down. You just kind of want to alternate pulling all four cords so that everything tightens evenly. And it should look about like two cow hitches up at the top there. Double check to make sure that all of your core strands are the same length and that there's approximately even tension on all of them. And then for this next knot, we're gonna make that same knot again, but before we tighten it down, we'll add in our second color. So a little bit different this time, taking those bottom cords and starting with them instead. So up through the middle and over to the other side, and with that other cord, under the first two, over the second two. And we wanna leave those loops and take our top cord up through the middle, down through that loop, pull our slack through, same with this side, and before we tighten down it should look about like that. Then we'll take that second color, match up the ends, and trace it back to the middle. In that middle, we're gonna loop around, a little bit tricky to see here, those bottom two middle cords. So it's the ones that go through the loops, but while they're still on bottom. So we wanna tuck this cord around there. So I'm just going to put it through, and then grab one side, so that our middle is sitting underneath that. So now we can go ahead and tighten this down. Just pulling on those four blue cords. No need to tighten the green one yet. Make that nice and tight up underneath the other ones. All right, so we add our second color. I'm just gonna stick that out of the way until we form another sanctified knot. So you get the drill by now. Cross over your two bottom cords. Leave those two loops for these cords to go through. So now again, before we tighten that down, we need to add in our green. So this is kind of a staple of how sanctified weaves work. They often have a pattern of cords down the middle. What we're doing this time is just a simple back and forth. So 
they start together, so they're gonna end apart. So we wanna wrap them down over those two crossed cords and bring them up to either side. Once we tighten that down, oops, kinda got out of place here. They should be facing down like this. And once we tighten down those cords in the middle, it looks like that. So now, on this time, it's gonna be the same thing, except they're starting apart. So we'll wrap them around and they should come up through the middle. So we'll get that set up and do that for you. There's our knot set up. Again, like I said, we'll take those green cords, wrap them around that knot that we just made, and this time they're coming up in the middle instead of apart. So that it looks like this. Tighten down those blues first. And then pull those greens tight. And make sure that those sit nice and flat so that our pattern looks even as we go along. We'll do one more of these and then speed through the rest of it. All right, so just a quick tip before we speed through the rest of it. When going back to the starting at middle, going apart, it's important to just kind of situate those right so that our stripes end up parallel and not crooked. So you guys have already done this one, so you know how to do it. But then when we tighten it down, it's important to just make sure that this loose green cord is lined up with the previous stripe. It's easy for it to kind of get off to the side, and then that doesn't look as good. So make sure that it matches up with the stripe before, and you should be good to go. So to finish this one off, since this is a premium dog collar, we can't just cut the ends and leave them where they are. I'm gonna hide them all nicely on the bottom for this project. So once you come to your last knot, this is just one sanctified knot untightened right now. We're just going to take these bottom cords and thread them through those same top loops that the other cords are threaded through. So just add it through there. It'll kind of find its place right alongside that other one. Do the same on the other side. And then we're actually gonna do the same thing with the green cords as well. So they're sticking up here. We're gonna first stick them down through the center. And then off to their respective sides. So this left side cord is gonna come down to here and then through the loop same direction as the other cords and same with the right side so it's a little bit trickier to tell which cords you need to tighten um, but you just kind of have to trace the cord back to where it starts and tighten down all of those cords one by one so then once that's tightened down as much as you need it to be go ahead and just cut right next to the knot but you do want to make sure those last knots are tight first just leave about an eighth of an inch on the end then before those have a chance to loosen up, melt all three at the same time, and just kind of round that over with the lighter. 
to the other side. So there we go. Our dog collar is all finished. You can modify this in any way you you want. Um, this is kind of what I planned on being the spot to attach the leash, uh, but you could add another one just into the weave too, if you prefer that, and I think that's more secure. But since this is a heavy duty O-ring and this is pretty abrasion resistant, I felt that this would serve both purposes in one piece of hardware. And for cord usage, this 20 inch collar ended up using uh, let's see, I think about 35 feet. I had about five feet left over on each end of the cord. So that's 20 feet, I guess. So closer to 30 feet of cord for a 20 inch collar. And then it did use up all 10 feet of that middle color. So what do you guys think? Is this worthy of making a kit? If you guys are interested, definitely like this video and comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any suggestions on how to improve this too, we'd like to know that as well. But for now, all the supplies for this tutorial can be found in separate links down in the description. So be sure to check those out if you're interested. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.